Hey guys, so we're out doing some fencing again today. We're trying to get this perimeter fence finished. I got to, uh, you can see over here, we're going all the way that way. Got about 800 feet more to go that way. We've got all the posts in, we're just running the wire now. And running high tensile wire is not really that hard, but it's kind of tedious work, so it's just time consuming because you gotta put all the little brackets. But let me show you real quick. We've been doing high tensile fence for about three years now and we've come across some lessons learned. I've done different videos on how we've done it over the course of the time, and now we've got this down really, really easy. And the only thing that we may change in the future is we may go to timeless fence posts. I'm gonna try those on a section next time and see how I like them. But uh, the reason that we do high tensile fence is because they'll keep everything in. They'll keep pigs in, they'll keep goats in if you keep the wires right, and it'll keep cattle in. So it works really well. Now, I don't care about goats, and I don't really care about sheep, um, but uh, we, uh, we wanted to have the ability to run them on the property. We're probably never gonna run sheep here just because we don't like lamb enough. Um, you know, we eat it maybe once a year, and I don't particularly care for it that much. I mean, it's, it's, it's okay. It's not like, like I don't like it, but why am I gonna raise something I don't particularly wanna eat? So we run pig and, and cattle here. And this fence will keep pig and cattle in. But uh, the bigger thing, yeah, the woodpecker, bigger thing that I worry about is keeping the, uh, the critters out. So the way that we do this now is here. You can see we run, these, we run these fence posts. These are, I believe, half inch, maybe three eighths in diameter. Um, and uh, they're from PowerFlex Fence. They're really affordable. Those ones cost, I think, I want to say well, I paid like a dollar eighty a post for these. Um, I don't remember what their current price is. Everything going up right now, who knows? But I believe those are about a buck eighty a post. And then these thicker ones here, these were maybe four dollars a post, something like that. Uh, so about the price of a metal T post or so. They're, 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 they were fairly equivalent. I remember that. And these ones are an inch and a quarter. And the way I install these ones is I just drill a hole in the ground. I have a big old drill bit, and I drill a hole in the ground about eighteen inches down, and then I just pound it in with a T post driver. And, uh, and that works really well. Let me show you this drill bit. So right here, that big old drill bit there, we just ordered that from Amazon, and, uh, and that takes those in. The thin ones, we don't even have to drill, we just drive them straight in. It takes two pounds with a metal T-post driver, and those things are down. And, uh, and they're, they're fairly solid. You can see these have some give in them, which is great, because if a branch or a deer or something hits them, they'll actually bend and flex quite a bit to where they don't break and just snap apart and um but uh, but they're stout enough that they'll hold the fence line in and you can see they go in maybe just a touch crooked but when you run that line through them they'll straighten all out they'll look real nice when they're all done so and then at the ends on the corners we do we do wood posts let me show you here we do these wood posts and i just do this h bar now I don't run a cross beam on it. And the reason I don't is because I don't pull the wire tight enough to have to do that. Usually what I find is that people that run their wire that tight, the, 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 the reason they're having to run those, those cross members is because they're running their wire too tight. That wire should be, I, what I, the way that I crank it down, is I use these little ratchets and I crank it as tight as I can get it by hand. And then I do like two or three clicks with the, with the ratchet or with the tool uh, to get it down. And then I'll come back out another day. This will settle sun. Everything will get in line a little bit. And so about a week or so, or, or even 24 hours later, you'll see some pretty significant settling in it. So I'll come out and I'll tighten it all up again. And, um, and I'll come out periodically for maybe the first six months and tighten everything up because uh, everything will just kind of take a set. Uh, but if you over tighten it, you'll pull your, your, your end post out. And uh, it doesn't need to be that tight, y'all. Um, everybody wants to get on there and ratchet it down. And it's like lug nuts, you know, the, the young 18 year olds want to ratchet those down and they end up bending their rotors. And uh, so you don't, you don't want to do that. You just need to torque it right to spec. And so these just need to be tight enough that a cow can't, uh, eat, uh, that, that, that a, cow, a cow can go through this, y'all. Um, they can, if they want, this is a psychological barrier. If they want to go through this, they're going through it. Uh, there ain't hardly a fence in the world that's going to keep a 2000 pound bull in. Um, and, uh, so, so anyway, so, so these ones, it's a psychological barrier. So all we want is we want that wire tight enough that the cow doesn't get zapped and pushed through it. We want him to get zapped and back away. And so that's all we're really trying to do. So for cows, you only need about three wires. If I was doing just cattle, <laughs> oh, sorry, dropped my, 
Drop my phone there. Uh, <laughs> if I was if I was doing just cattle, I would do a uh, uh, probably do one wire at 18 inches, one wire at about 30 inches. That's right at that kind of nose height for them. And then I would do you know one wire at 48 inches or so. And then uh, I'd probably run. I mean, you, the way that we do it a little bit different, but I would run the ground wire. I don't consider the ground wire one of the wires. So the way that we run it is I run one at between nine and 12 inches. So uh, depending on, on where it's at, and, uh, nine inches, as you start getting some good topsoil coming in, it'll get really close to the ground. So you'll have to raise it out. That's why I say 12 inches tends to work a little bit better. It's not as good starting off, but as your topsoil fills up, um, then the, the 12 inches will work better. And then I do one at 18 inches, one at 30 inches, one at 36 and then one at 48. The one that's at 36 is our ground wire. We run that all the way around the perimeter fence and then I put a ground at all my corner posts all the way around. And uh, that way, if when a cow sticks her head through there in that spot, they get a really high voltage and uh, it, it'll, it'll jump them back quite a bit. And that's, that's really what we want. We wanna keep them in, we wanna keep our cows safe. And in order to do that, you have to uh, we, we have to give them give them a decent amount of voltage to to, to do that. It's not going to hurt them. It's not going to kill them or anything like that. You know those, those charging uh, the, the fence chargers are are not designed to do that. Uh, but it'll give them a shock. It's it's like getting hit with a hammer. I've touched it before and it hurts. Uh, and uh, and that's what we need to happen. And we need the same thing to happen to the pigs. Um, and uh, that's why we do so many grounding rods all the way around. But that, those, those two wires there in the center with the ground wire, that for one ties the grounding uh, rods all together all around the property. And then two, like I said, it acts as like basically touching both those metal posts on the, uh, on the, on the, 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 both those terminals on the fence charger. So that's kind of the long and the short of it, guys. A high tensile fence, the real advantages to it is it's cheap to run and do a lot and it'll keep everything in and it lasts a long time. This fence easily will be here in 20 years um, and uh, with very minimal maintenance to it. All I got to do is come by and occasionally weed whack it. If you keep your fence hot, it'll, let it, it'll keep everything dead um, and it'll kill all, the, all the, the grass and stuff that wants to grow up around it. But we come and, and we'll weed whack a couple feet out on either side and, and that, uh, that'll, keep, that'll keep everything back. But uh, really, guys, high tensile fence is just so much cheaper than running woven wire or and it works better than barbed wire. Um, you know, barbed wire doesn't work that well on pigs. Pigs tend to just push past it and get bloody. And uh, so I don't like barbed wire for pigs. Um, the uh, the woven wire is is by far my favorite. Or, or, um, the, uh, the woven wire doesn't even work that well for pigs. They tend to lift it up. You got to keep the pigs from touching the fence, which the only way to do that is with electric fence. So um, I would do barbed wire over woven wire with pigs, but... Uh, yeah, anyways, high tensile fence is just the only way to do a large plot of land. I appreciate y'all watching. Um, I know I'm sorry we didn't get the, uh, the videos out Saturday morning like we normally try to. And uh, that's just, guys, it's because we're out here fencing and uh, Mandolin, we had to get busy this morning. So uh, we're trying to get this stretch done so that this piece of the property is completely fenced in. And uh, I've got a lot more work to do. So we'll catch y'all next time. Thanks for watching.